Hi, I'm your host, Mystical Blue, and welcome to another exciting episode by Marvelous Videos, where today we'll explore Triclops Origins Explored, He-Man. Triclops is a character that all He-Man fans are familiar with. He is an enemy of He-Man and Eternia's other heroes, serving as a minion of Skeletor, the antagonist of the franchise. He is equipped with a spinning visor helmet that contains three artificial eyes, each of which provides a distinct form of vision. This provides him with the advantage of being able to see in all three directions at the same time in some media, whilst in others, he is only able to see out of his front eye and spins his visor to accommodate the different types of vision he needs. Let's dive into exploring Triclops through the years. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Family, ...and so little concern for his own. I assure you, that's not true. Triclops character history. We are going to dig into the history of Triclops' character, starting with the point at which it all began for this character, early mini comics. When it came to the Masters of the Universe toy line, Triclops was among the first characters that were designed. According to Roger Sweet, the character of the line, he was supposed to be a heroic warrior when he was first created, but he ended up being bundled with the villains instead. His first appearance in a story was in Mattel mini comic Terror of Triclops. In it, he is shown as a formidable enemy who is at par with He-Man in terms of physical prowess. Skeletor, realising that he required a warrior with strength comparable to that of He-Man, decided to summon him. Given that his helmet gives him the ability to see all around him and allows him to detect all attacks from behind, he is portrayed as a great hunter and swordsman, as well as a handy spy. One of his eyes has night vision, and the other eye has Distivision, which enables him to see extremely far away. Together, these abilities give him an enhanced vision. The third eye varied from story to story, and was claimed to give him the ability to see through solid things at times, while at other times, it was said to give him the ability to see around corners. Triclops is a skilled swordsman, in addition to his optical abilities, making him a formidable enemy. It is worth noting that the clothing worn by the character in his earliest appearances in mini-comics deviates greatly from the one shown in the iconic figure version. Many of the visual elements of the characters in the early mini-comics were inconsistent, but Triclops is among the most extreme examples of this case. Triclops is regarded as a very smart and formidable warrior, despite the fact that most of the evil warriors were portrayed in the mini-comics as being only slightly more intelligent than their latter animated forms. They've got a robot. Filmation Cartoon Series Filmation gave Triclops his debut appearance in the animated series that accompanied the toy line in the pilot episode titled Diamond Ray of Disappearance. The mini-comics style is continued in this episode by showing Triclops to be almost as strong as He-Man, but this is only hinted at briefly during the story's climatic confrontation. His eyes are now in different forms in the animation, namely circular, triangle and square ones, and they have the abilities of night vision, gamma vision and distavision. Additionally, he's able to see in every direction at the same time, thanks to the combination of his three eyes. His helmet rotates while making clicking and whirring sounds, which may indicate that it is mechanical instead of magical, as the mini-comics had suggested. The fact that the sounds occur when his helmet rotates add support to this. They can also shoot laser beams from the eye that is facing forward in this particular version of the character. However, in contrast to the other characters from his wave, Triclops makes relatively scarce appearances in the series and doesn't get much in the way of character development. He is portrayed almost entirely as a stereotypically bumbling henchman, and he is relegated to the background for the majority of his roles. According to the series Bible, Triclops was a crew member aboard Marlena Glenn's ship, and his name was T.E. Scope. He was supposedly mutated in the crash along with Evil Lynn and Beastman, but this origin was not included in the series. Even in episodes like The Royal Cousin and Ordeal in the Darklands, when he is paired up with Evil Lynn, 
and given more significant roles, he is shown as nothing more than a bumbling sidekick who is unable to make decisions for himself. These episodes also show that he has a far stronger sense of loyalty to Skeletor than the majority of his other team members do. The idea that he may be a match for He-Man is never developed because of his lack of character development and he rapidly fades into the background of the series. By the time season 2 rolls around, the writers have almost completely forgotten about him. Despite that, he does make one last appearance in the She-Ra episode titled Reunions. The voice and speech pattern of the character vary rather drastically from one appearance to the next, which is presumably at least partially owing to the fact that the character is not utilised frequently enough for a consistent voice to be established. Arco? 2002 TV series. Triclops appears again in the 2002 relaunch of the Masters of the Universe toy line and TV series. His appearance is altered slightly and it is revealed that his helmet is actually a cybernetic attachment that can fire a laser of a different colour from each of his eyes. When the helmet is melted by acid in an episode titled Rise of the Snakemen Part 1, we can see that his artificial eyes are cybernetically hooked into his actual eye sockets. Triclops is given a much bigger role in the animated series than he was in the one from the 1980s and he is portrayed as a cranky inventor and technologist. From the character's original conception, which saw him as a more primitive warrior, this portrayal is a far cry. He is the main inventor for Skeletor and he spends much of his time in his workshop creating various vehicles and weapons to assist Skeletor. The Doom Seekers, which are used to spy on He-Man and the Masters, are one of his most notable inventions. The show maintains the portrayal of him as one of the more loyal of Skeletor's minions, despite him being shown to be significantly more intelligent than the majority of Skeletor's minions. This is more in keeping with the original mini-comics that were published in the Vintage line. In spite of this, he does eventually strike out on his own and makes an attempt to betray Skeletor in the episode titled Roberto's Gambit. In this episode, he makes use of his most recent creation in an effort to gain control of Eternia for himself after Skeletor rejects the invention. The comic book series that accompanied the animated show gave him a backstory, which is consistent with the original concept of the character being a medieval-style swordsman. He started off as a noble swordsman, but for some reason he wore a bandana that fully covered his eyes. After being blinded by a magic spell, he became the protector of a scientific research facility. In this position, he fought his enemies by relying on his keen senses of smell and hearing while also donning a helmet in place of the bandana that had previously covered his eyes. The building's owner, whose life he had saved, had granted him this position and when the building came under attack by Keldor before he transformed into Skeletor, the two of them began to battle each other. Keldor then deceived Triclops into thinking that the tower's owner had used the helmet to keep the spell on his sight intact for the purpose of employing him as his defender. As a result, Keldor was able to overcome the tower with the assistance of Triclops. Keldor had repaid Triclops by creating the mechanical visor he wears to this day to restore his sight. But the visor also secretly serves to keep Triclops faithful to Keldor. Visor or not, Triclops has remained in Skeletor's service ever since, wrongly believing that Skeletor saved his life. One more enters the light. Glory be! Masters of the Universe Revelation Triclops was a participant in Skeletor's massive attack on Castle Greyskull, leading a squad of Skelcons that were flying one-man war sleds. Triclops gave off the impression that he was having a good time, up until the point when the Royal Guard and Man-at-Arms showed up to join the fight, flying on their sky sleds and shooting down his vehicle. Later, Triclops used the situation to condemn magic in general and become the leader of the Motherboard cult. This was after magic was considered to have almost completely vanished from Eternia and Skeletor and He-Man were believed to be dead. Ironically, in order to complete the ritual marvels required by Motherboard, Triclops used one of the very few magic items that were still in existence. 
Triclops would use a magic goblet to gather what appeared to be electronic water that came from a huge altar inside Snake Mountain as part of this ceremony and makes his followers drink it. This action would immediately transform them into cyborgs with numerous limbs being replaced with mechanical weaponry. Both Trapjaw and Whiplash became part of Motherboard and gained mechanical enhancements. In the case of Trapjaw, additional enhancements were added. Additionally, the robotic blast attack joined them. Teela and Andra, two mercenaries, were recruited by an elderly woman named Magestra to steal the magic goblet. But Snake Mountain could only be reached by breaking through the trapdoor underneath Wolfgate. Teela was taken aback to discover that Snake Mountain had significantly more technology and that Triclops' doom seekers were patrolling the halls. Teela and Andra assume the appearance of pilgrims in order to sneak into the motherboard ceremony. After seeing one of the pilgrims receive the mechanical blessing, Teela ultimately decided to reveal herself in order to divert the attention of the cultists away from Andra as she approached the goblet. The struggle came to an end when Blast Attack was unable to prevent himself from exploding, which made it possible for the two female warriors to escape the royal room. Whiplash was incapacitated as a result of the explosion, but Triclops, nevertheless, gave the command for the Doomseekers and even more cultists to pursue the women. Triclops persisted in his mission to destroy as many of the planet's magical items as possible, even after the goblet was stolen from him. He then boarded a Rotan and made his way to the ruins of a magic fountain where a large number of peasants were waiting in line to try to obtain some of the magic water that was still present. Triclops gave the order to destroy the fountain and he was accompanied by a huge number of members from his cult as well as Trapjaw who was driving a vehicle that was equipped with a big crystal powered cannon. Duncan, a former man at arms, joined the other peasants at the fountain and immediately started fighting against the motherboard cult. Soon after, three more characters, Teela, Andra and Evil Lynn arrived to assist him. Evil Lynn used her magical staff to blast Triclops off his vehicle. When Triclops approached Evil Lynn to declare that it was time that she merged with Motherboard, the savage beastman appeared, what seemed to be out of nowhere, and grabbed Triclops by the neck. Even though Triclops stated that he did not have a fight with Beastman, the savage henchman had pledged to protect Evil Lynn and warned Triclops that he must either leave or be killed. The Triclops went with the first possible course of action and retreated. The members of Motherboard then moved on to take on Castle Greyskull, which, being stripped of its magical properties, had reverted back to its primordial appearance as the Hall of Wisdom. This time, Triclops gave orders for a squadron of Rotons to continuously attack Greyskull, but Teela had anticipated the attack coming and instructed Man-at-Arms to defend Greyskull. Until Teela and her allies returned from their adventures to Subternia and Preternia with the two parts of the Sword of Power and a resurrected Prince Adam, Duncan was able to fend off several attacks. The appearance of the Hall of Wisdom shifted back to that of Castle Greyskull as soon as Adam raised the sword in the air and invoked the power of Greyskull and Triclops immediately gave the command for his followers to flee the area. Triclops is a character that we've seen appear consistently in the He-Man universe. He might be an antagonist, but he's a character that all He-Man fans know and love. Beginning with the mini-comics and continuing through the Netflix series, he's a character who's gone through a lot of changes throughout his existence, which is to be expected given how long he's been a part of the franchise. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.